My name's Alison Roger. I'm the director of MOAC, which is a doctoral training centre at the interface between physical sciences and life sciences. Our goal is to train students in those areas. MOAC stands for Molecular Organisation and Assembly in Cells, and the key words there are molecules and cells, and the key activities that the students undertake, as well as the academic staff working with them, are to develop physical sciences techniques to solve biological problems. The idea being that um, in biology now, in the modern era, uh, it's not good enough just to look at uh, a molecule, say, down, down a microscope. What one should do is really understand how that that system functions mathematically and that requires uh, an input from theoretical scientists as well as experimental scientists. John is a very talented young student who's joined uh, the doctoral training course. He has a background in mathematical science and computational science and he decided that he wanted to do something at the life science interface so that's trying to understand how uh, biological systems function. So he has two sets of supervisors, one in chemistry, one set in chemistry, um, that's Professor Unwin and Professor McPherson, and myself in, in physics. So he has an input from me as a, as a theorist and from Pat and Julie as experimental scientists. MOEC is ideal because whereas I would have been able to take a mathematics PhD or a computer science PhD after my undergrad, it gave me the training to branch out into other disciplines, like biology and physics, which I am in now. What I'm doing is I'm looking at the molecular basis of life. So life is made of DNA and proteins, and uh, proteins are very much biological machines on a very small scale. And what we can do here in chemistry is probe the mechanics using an atomic force microscope, which is a long cantilever like this, and uh, we attach the protein to the cantilever and to a surface, and then we pull on it. And as we pull on it, it deflects the cantilever and by shining a laser off the cantilever we can work out how much force we're exerting on the molecule. And once I have that data I can then go to my physics supervisor Matthew and uh, we can analyse what we think the protein's doing. MOEC enables me to look at systems I wouldn't otherwise understand and with instruments I would never be able to use. So the atomic force microscope is a complicated expensive instrument that I get to play with and uh, the theory I do is much different from what I studied at undergrad, so Mike gives me this opportunity. It's really a very novel uh, system in that the student gets to do both experiments and theory, and this is something that really wouldn't have happened more than about five years ago. It gives this multidisciplinary approach to all sorts of questions within the life sciences. So you have a supervisor who uh, is, you know, is a biologist and works in this lab, uh, to advise me on that kind of things and teach me that and train me and, and bounce ideas off and I have the same thing with a mathematician who's you know, a very skilled mathematician and, and he can uh, guide me in, on that angle of my project, that aspect. One of the sort of, if you like, surprising things that came out of MOAC is how good it's been at nucleating contact between scientists working in different disciplines. So now I regularly talk to colleagues in the biological science department who I wouldn't have even known about before MOAC came into existence. The challenge is that they have supervisors in two different departments, two different disciplines, and that can be really, really difficult if the two supervisors are learning about an area together as well. And so the students often the communicator in the middle. The good side of that is that they learn an awful lot in the process. We were funded initially for five intakes of students. So we started off five groups of students, they all started on the masters and then the PhD. After five years we were reviewed to see whether we would continue. We've recently heard that we're funded for another five intakes of students which is great news. I think it's very much the way ahead um, because if I was to do an isolated project with either Professor Julian McPherson or Matthew then I would be limiting myself to either the theory or the experiment and this way I get to use both and that gives me a much wider perspective on what I'm doing. I think there's actually been a sort of change in mindset amongst a lot of scientists. So um, many biological scientists, I think, have seen perhaps for the first time that a theoretical input can really genuinely add value and, and, uh, and, and knowledge to, to, uh, to a problem. And I think the theoretical scientists have also probably come out with a better idea of what it is to do experiments and the limitations thereof. So I think that has really nucleated a, a different mindset at the university and uh, it's something we see going forward very positively into the future. In the next phase, we're going to focus our scientific remit a little bit more than we have done to focus very much on where our expertise is, which is instrumentation development, mathematical modelling of biological systems, and the experimentation to go with those. 
we've got to realise that the landscape at Warwick's changed since 2003 when we started because we now have two other doctoral training centres funded by the same research council. And so it's not that they're doing some of what we're doing, but they're also very interdisciplinary and students are working in those areas as well. So we want to emphasise the core expertise of MOAC. It's really, really difficult to predict what will happen in 10 years' time. But if I have to do it, I would say that students from programmes like ours will be the key leaders in industry. So the ones who are graduating now will end up going to the key positions of leadership in industry and in academia because they'll understand how to be very flexible in the way they think, how to take knowledge from one area of science into another area of science. And instead of being stuck in the I'm a chemist or I'm a mathematician, model they will say I'm a scientist we have a problem here how do we solve that problem how do we move forward in really creative and innovative ways and that's what I see our students doing and it's a really exciting prospect.